glory out of this service. Get glory out of this place. Get glory out of the preaching. Get glory out of the singing, God. Get glory out of the serving. God, get glory out of us as we magnify you and bless you for who you are. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. That clapping just sounds like an ordinary response, but if God has been good to you, if God has been awesome in your life, you ought to worship him and bless him for the awesome God that he is. I pray that you would arise on your feet as we welcome in our worship with our morning hymn. God bless you. I know you notice that the screens are not working this morning. But we don't need to see those words because I'm going to line this hymn for you. And most of you who are of the Baptist tradition know, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Let's sing it together. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Glory Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Perfect submission, perfect submission, perfect delight, perfect delight. Visions, of rapture, visions of rapture, now first on my side, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story, come on, this is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. Now this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. All is at rest. I am my Savior. I am my Savior. for you, but give God a hand clap now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got a story to tell, praising your Savior all the day long. Pastor already prayed about the fact that we want God's glory, right? 
and we want it to rise among us in here. I want you to join us and sing that. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, you know this, come on. Rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord sing it. Rise among us. Say, let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise.
morning just to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Did anybody have a trying week this week? Anybody have a stressful week? Did anybody have a blessed week? Well, you can join me in testifying that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice. So if you've came today to rejoice, let all the redeemed rejoice today. If he woke you up this morning, rejoice. If he started you on your way this morning, rejoice. If you got food in your belly, rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and greatly to be praised. I don't know about you, but I came to have church today. Life is too rough sometimes for me to come and play church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you would join me this morning and open your Bibles to the uh, book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verses 14 through 17. Again, that's the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verses 14 through 17. When you have it, say amen. Again, that's the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20 verse 14 through 17. And the word of the Lord reads, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Methaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. Then he, and he said, Listen, all you of Judah, and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the accent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Tomorrow, on Monday, tomorrow, on Tuesday, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Most gracious and kind Father, we're gathered here at this place in Zion called Shiloh. First, God, to say thank you for being God and God alone. There is none like you, God. You sit high, God, but you look low. God, you're mighty yet merciful. God, you're great, God, but you're gracious. So this morning we say thank you. 
Oh God, we ask for forgiveness this morning as we stand in your presence in awe of you. God, forgive us and wash us over of all the things, God, we done that we thought wrong, that we wanted to do wrong, God, that we did wrong. God, wash us anew. Oh God, we're gathered here this morning, God, not only to fellowship, God, but to thank you for being God. Now, God, move in this place like never before. Let your anointing fall, God, that tumors are dry, God. Let your anointing fall, God, that diseases, God, are healed, God. Let your anointing fall, God, that minds are shape, God, that sanity is restored. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, move like never before. God, have your way. Let your anointing fill this place. Throw your Holy Spirit around right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let, let it not just be another service, God, but let us encounter you that we might leave restored, revived, God, renewed and resurrected today, God. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. Have your way, God. Speak through the preacher. Anoint the preacher afresh to bring a mighty word in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Ushers, would you allow the uh, members and the guests in the foyer to make their way in? Amen. 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 God is good all the time. I know I'm in church this morning. God is good all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Once again, welcome to worship this morning. At this time, we would like to acknowledge all of our guests, all those who are worshiping at Shiloh for the first time. Please stand and be recognized. If you are worshiping here today for the first time, please stand and be recognized. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Tav Quincy Heatley, and our members, we welcome you. We are so glad to see you today. Our ushers are handing you are welcome packing. Inside of the welcome packet, there's a welcome card. Please com uh, complete the card and place it in the offering plate at an appropriate time or hand it to one of our ushers as you exit the worship center. Also, you can text welcome to 703-991-4996. Again, you can text welcome to 703-991-4996 so we can stay connected with you. At this time, Shiloh, let's recite our vision. It's on the back of your monthly bulletins, and it should be ingrained in your heart. Our vision, all together, our vision is to spread the message of faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ by equipping disciples to engage the community locally and globally for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God at this time, Shiloh, we encourage you to greet our guests and one another. Once again, welcome to worship. If you can, by the grace of God, let me see you clap those Oh 
Praise the Lord, Shiloh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've reached a point in our uh, year where we uh, annually honor all of our graduates from pre-K all the way up to graduate school. Amen, amen. Let us put our hands together to honor <clears throat> the graduates on this uh, beautiful uh, morning. We know promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, the north, nor the south nor from man, but it's God who promotes all things. So let us thank God this morning for this moment of promotion. Amen, 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 hallelujah. This morning we'll read off, on the, we'll read off the list of our honorees, our graduates, once again from pre-K, kindergarten, elementary school, middle, high, college, and even graduate school. So this morning, as we call the names, I ask that you hold your applause to the end, and we can send up a loud Shabbat to God for their honors at the end of it. Amen. 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 This morning, we'll begin with Sister Selena Michelle Sawyer, who's graduating from pre K kindergarten from Little Smiling Faces. Amen. We have Armani Lachey, Sister Armani Lachey Thompson, graduating from kindergarten from Jefferson, Houston. We, will, we have Sister Pat Patricia Burgess, graduating from elementary school from Anthony Tate, from Anthony T. Lane Elementary School. Sir William Harling, Graduating from elementary from George Mason Elementary School. We have Taylor, Sister Taylor Mahogany, Samira Frazier, graduating from elementary school, from James K. Polk Elementary School. Amen. Sister Alexis Spencer, graduating from middle school, from Carl Sandberg Middle School. We have Brother Arrington Lyons, graduating from middle school, from Lake Braddock Secondary. We have Ashton Khalil Smith graduating from middle school from the Jefferson Houston School, Sister Christina Gabrielle Vinson, middle school, Washington Irvin Middle School, Sister Janae Louise Andrews from Benjamin Strodert Middle School, Sister Mesa Leilani Bird graduating from Washington Irvin Middle School, we have Brother Scott David Woods graduating from Hayfield Secondary School. Amen, amen. And now we, we're on to our high school uh, graduates. And I want to say congratulations. You're entering a great part of life. I pray for you. Keep God first as you reach for success and fulfill your purpose in life. We'll begin with our loving sister, dear Angel, Angel Taylor Griffin, graduating from North Point High School. Brother Benjamin Bismarck McNair from Hayfield Secondary School. Brother Carrington Brox from Hayfield Secondary School. Brother Devin Christopher Adams 
from Robert E. Lee High School. Brother Gabriel Harold from T.C. Williams High School. Brother Jer Lamont Andrews from Potomac High School. We have Jalen A. Bird from Episcopal High School. We have one of my faves, Sister Kiana Janae Williams from Potomac Senior High School. We have the beautiful, loving Lauren Rochelle Johnson from T.C. Williams High School. Amen. And I want to specifically highlight this young man who came and found me one day. I was at T.C. Williams. I didn't even meet him here at Shiloh. I met him at the school. And he said, you're my youth pastor. <laughs> Brother LeBaron Bass, Jr. from T.C. Williams High School. Now on to our college graduates. Constance, Sister Constance Marquette McNair from Liberty University. Amen. Her mom will receive her award. Sister Kendra Shanae Knight from Virginia State University. Amen. The moms are in the house who received the awards. Amen. 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 I remember the day my mom got my degree. Sister Latasha Lynette Sturgis from George Mason University. Sister Latoya Shree Austin from University of District of Columbia. Amen. And the past two graduates I'd like to highlight are mothers who are getting their bachelor's degrees. And that goes to show you that it's never too late. So I don't know who's sitting here today contemplating going back to school, but it's never too late. Amen. Now we have our graduate degrees. Sister Koina Fursina Woods from West Webster University Graduate School. Sister Sandy R. Harling from Bowie State University. And our very own Reverend Stevenson Leonard Reed from Capitol Seminary and Graduate School. Before we celebrate all of our graduates, I would, like to re I would like to read the listing, the names of the high school graduates who received the scholarship from Shiloh Baptist Church. Our scholarship recipients are Brother Benjamin Bismarck McNair, Brother Carrington T. Brox, Brother Gabriel Harold, Sister Jalen Bird, Sister Kiana, Janae Williams, Sister Lauren Rochelle Johnson, and Brother LeBaron Marshall Bass. If we could today, as a congregation, stand on your feet and honor our graduates. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. parents proud this day for children that have graduated hallelujah if you are a parent could you please stand if you're a parent in the room of any child we need to celebrate you amen hallelujah in the name of Jesus we praise God for each and every one of you wonderful thing especially the parents of people that are graduated from college Lord have mercy Parents that know the kids are about to go to college are already praying, amen, in the name of Jesus. It's like you got to retire just to get some money to be able to send somebody to school, in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. It's just the truth. How y'all doing this morning? It's so good to see all of you. 
uh, I want to just have a few announcements before we move forward in the service. Uh, we will be celebrating our Family and Friends Day on Sunday, July 9th. And so I pray that uh, you would bring someone to church with you that's also the day we kick off our casual attire for the summer. Amen? Amen. Now, we will be in casual attire from July, August, and the entire month of September. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, the congregations always come as you are, but this is more so for our leadership um, that we will have a different attire in uh, uh, August and September, and then we'll see how it works, amen, amen. Uh, to do that as well. I uh, want you to be free to express yourself and to uh, worship your God, and we know we serve a God who says, come as you are, amen, and not to get caught up in dress and things of that nature. So we will be casual, amen, and so I pray that you will conduct yourselves accordingly for that. I also want to let you know that uh, Family and Friends Day really is the kickoff for our Vacation Bible School that will begin on July 10th at Monday. Amen. So please come out to our VBS celebration as well. And on that Tuesday, I will begin a teaching series for four weeks called Moving Forward. Now that Tuesday evening, the entire church is going to be together. This is something that has been given to me by the Spirit of the Lord that we must do. I'm also making this mandatory uh, for our leadership. That means if you are a leader serving in any capacity, you need to be here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., July 11th, the 18th, the 25th, and August the 1st. I will speak more to the leaders of your ministries as well, but we have to come together as a church if we are going to seek the favor of God because God blesses unity, God blesses love, and God blesses faith. And we have to deal with some basic things and basic principles of what it means to be Christian so that we will know who God is requiring that we be so that we really can receive the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. So I pray that you will join us as well as we do that. Also, um, as I said this last week, if you're on social media, if you would please go to Yelp or go to uh, Google and uh, make sure you give us a good rating on our church because we have people that travel in and out of the area. And when they come to the area, they are looking for a church home. And some of the places that they go to is Google and Yelp to see what people are saying about the church. You can also put um, on our Facebook page, you can give reviews as well. Please do that to help us so that we can help other people get connected with God as they continue to be with us. Amen. God is excellent. God is excellent. And God is good. I say that not facetiously. I say that because it is the truth. Because as we enter into a time um, of giving and worship, I just want to give this brief giving testimony as I gave in the first service. Um, those of you know that I didn't move here from Georgia, uh, my family and I, and uh, we didn't know that the cost of living was so high up here. Uh, you know, I was in Georgia, and, um, you know, it's Georgia. So um, it's, it's real expensive. And your money can go a long way. I came to Northern Virginia. And um, I saw some things, and I'm still seeing some things. And so as I was praying um, for my son to uh, attend school, um, I wanted to you know, make sure that he gets any, actually daycare, but I didn't realize that you know, daycare is really like tuition for school up here. Um, you know, it costs more to put him in daycare than it did to cost me for college in one year. Jesus. So um, praying that Lord would do something. And so in a move of faith, I uh, went down to the school that I knew we could not afford, but I heard the Lord say, do it. So we went in faith and God began to make a way. And as I had my plans for how we wanted to do it, for some odd reason, the IRS decided that they weren't going to give me my tax refund. And I was like, huh? I said, OK, well, this got to be a battle. So this is what we're going to do. So I got the form, filled out the form. Uh, told the Lord, I'm filling out this form. Whoever gets this form, you are the God of all creation. You are the Lord of all flesh. You know where this form is going. You know who's going to receive it. When they see my name, I pray that when they see my name, they will reverse what is here. And I ask that you would give to me what belongs to me. That was in April. And so through the couple of months of praying, just kept praying, kept praying, knowing that God can do all things. He can do anything but fail, knowing that God is great continuing to tithe, continuing to give even more than the tithe and giving things of that nature. And so um, as I was uh, on my way, I dropped William Quincy back off at home and I was coming to Tuesday evening worship. Um, I went and checked the mailbox. And I was checking the mailbox. I saw um, a letter from the U.S. Department of Treasury. 
Now, when you see a letter from the U.S. Department of Treasury, you know, um, sometimes you're like, hmm, but I saw it had this little specific color code. I said, I received one of these before. This is a check. Open it up. There was my refund. Hallelujah. See, now, see, 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 you, you, you don't understand. I could not afford to put my son in school. I asked God, give this to me. He gave it to me. I immediately took it up, opened the check, went to Crystal. I said, babe, we can never, ever doubt God. Believe God. And he did it for me. Now, here's the beautiful thing about God. He's not a respecter of persons. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's not because I walk in the anointing of God. All of you got the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you if you said yes to him. But it's because God honors faith. If you would just ask and trust him and continue to walk in obedience, no compromise of anything, but make him Lord of every aspect of your life, God said he will take care. And he will provide for you. And he does that through the giving. I know that if I would have stopped tithing just to make sure my son would get in school, this would not have happened. Amen. But I know him. And I trust him. And he's proven himself to me too many times for me to doubt him. I know that's some of y'all's testimony as well. Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue to worship God through our giving. Amen. It is time to give unto God. God loves a cheerful giver. Not cheerful with our mouths, but cheerful with our hearts that our hearts are in the right place. We don't give so God can just give to us. We give because we love God and we're surrendered and we're yielded unto God. And some of the benefits of the blessings is the promise of God that he will be there and take care of us. I praise God for his many blessings, but I praise God that God can still be God of the U.S. Treasury and make sure that if his son needs something, his son will get it because he's just that type of God and that is the God that you served this morning. I want to challenge you just to believe him and take him at his word. Make him the God of your finances because you know what? He already is the God of your finances. Hallelujah. And he can do it. Praise the name of Jehovah. If you're making a check, please make it payable to Shiloh Baptist Church. Please fill out an envelope and write legibly as well. If you know your, num your member number, please put that on the envelope as well. We just want to keep an accurate account of your giving because your giving here truly is tax deductible. You can also give cash, but we do ask that you place it in an envelope so that we can keep track of your giving. If you do not have that method of payment, you can give via your smartphone or your tablet. All you have to do is text Shiloh BC to 77977. That's Shiloh BC to 77977. Now, once you do that for the first time, you will be prompted with a URL to put in your banking and card information. It's through our secure giving site called PushPay. You may also download our church app at your Google Play Store or your iTunes Store. Just search for Shiloh Alexandria, Shiloh Alexandria. And with our church app, you can stay connected with us, stream our services, as well give. God is a great God. And he receives the gifts of his children. And he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we praise him this day. Let us pray. God, we thank you now for this time and this moment that we have to give unto you. You have been so great. You have been so awesome. You are excellent in all of your ways. Thank you, Lord God, for these gifts that we give unto you. Now, Lord God, we ask that you would use them and that you would continue to advance your kingdom on this side of glory through what we give to you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Hallelujah and amen. Our ushers are coming to us now. Please receive them. God bless you. I count not myself to have apprehended when I think of all the things he's done. Thank you, Jesus. But just one thing I do, I put the path behind me so I can press. Short of his glory, 
Well, we can learn from our wrongs. Yes, we can. But one thing you got to do, you got to put the past behind you so I can. Press for the mark, for the prize, for the high calling. Press for the mark, for the prize, for the high yeah, calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press for the mark, Thank you, for the Jesus. Prize, for the high calling. Church, it's prayer time. We're going to ask our graduates to please come, and then we're going to ask that all of our members press, press to the altar. It's prayer time. Graduates, parents, those who are standing in need of prayer, if you can't get to the altar, would you please stand? How many of us know that God is able? to do exceedingly and abundantly. And as we look at our graduates standing in front of us, we already know that God does just what he does. Let us pray. Father God, it's again we humble our hearts and our minds. God, to come before you with thanksgiving and praise. Father, you alone are worthy. And so we thank you, God. Lord, we thank you for everything. We take not anything as if we did it. But we realize, God, that you have blessed us in so many ways. 
Father, we thank you for the person's hand that we hold. We squeeze trust and belief in that hand. We squeeze faith to believe in that hand. Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do. Father, as we have those who have graduated, those who have closed one portion of life to start another, we thank you, God, for the journey thus far. We thank you for the provisions that you have provided thus far. And Father, we look ahead and trust you, God, leaning not unto our own understanding. God, you are able to do everything. We thank you, God, for the doors that you have open. And we thank you for the doors that you shut. We trust you and we believe you, God. We submit our will to you today, God. We don't understand everything, God, but we know you have all answers. And so we trust you. We thank you for Shiloh. We thank you for your manservant, God. We thank you for the vision that you have placed in him, God. We thank you for your word, God. Your people need to hear your voice this morning, God. And so we stand in expectation that you've never let us down. Some of us are hungry for the word, God. So we stand in anticipation. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. Lord, thank you for our finances Thank you for opening doors in that area, God. Lord, someone stands with a, uh, somewhere in their heart, unsure about what tomorrow holds. Bless them. Someone's sick in their body. You are a healer. Someone's worried about something that's planned this week. Let them trust you, God. Lord, we don't have all the answers, but we know you do. So we thank you in advance, God. Lord, we open up our mouths this morning, God, before going back to our seats just to whisper thank you, just to say thank you, just to lift our hands to say thank you, God. Hallelujah and bless your name, God. Thank you for the colleges that open doors for our children, God. Bless them as they travel, God, into this new journey, God. Go with them and stand with them, God. Be there with them in the midnight hour, God. We pray protection over these children, God. We pray, we pray that you would give them uncommon favor. Bless their parents, God. Finances, let it line up in the precious name of God of Jesus, God. Someone is waiting on an envelope to tell them that they can go to school. God, we ask that you would deliver like only you can. Lord, and when it's all said and done, we give you all praise, all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Daniel, the sixth chapter, verse 16. I pray that you bear with us the reason why you don't see the screens on in the sanctuary. We are in the process of installing new high-definition cameras at multiple angles within the sanctuary. And because of that, we had to get a new encoder for our streaming system. So our streaming is working fine, but we have to do some connection to look at the connections for our projectors. So those of you that are viewing us via live stream, hello, you can see us very well. And you can also see all of our graphics. Those of you in the sanctuary, uh, you are not able to see that, but you don't need to because you're here. Amen. And so we know that technology is wonderful when it works. Amen. Uh, but there are some times when you just have to keep moving. As I said before in the first service, whether we have a screen or not, that does not disregard the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is king and that he is God. So if you would be so kind to grab a Bible or go to your Bible app on your device and go to Daniel, the sixth chapter, verse 16, we will read verses 16, concluding at verse 22, continuing in our series, Confidence in Crisis. 
pray that we can have an encouraging word that will liberate you and help you this morning. Daniel 6, verse 16. So the king gave the command. They brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke to Daniel, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Verse 22 again, my God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I pray that you would bear with me for a few moments on the subject entitled Confidence in Crisis 2, Delivered in the Lion's Den. Delivered in the Lion's Den. Let us pray. God, we give your name glory. We honor you and we exalt you, Lord God. We praise you and we magnify you, Lord God. We give you glory because you are the great deliverer. In fact, God, no one can deliver like you. You are the one who is able to see about us in every situation and ensure that we will come out better than we were when we went in because of your keeping and sustaining power. But now, God, as we pray, even now, as this word goes forth, Lord God, we serve notice to the enemy that we did not come to play church this morning, but that we are the people of God who walk with the authority in the Lord that you have given us in Jesus' name. Because you say in your Bible that after Jesus, the heavenly armies follow him. So God, dispatch your warring angels right now in the name of Jesus for anything that's trying to stop something in the atmosphere from allowing your word to go forth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of Jezebel right now in the name of Jesus. And every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus with apostolic authority that you've given me, I command you to leave and be gone in the name of Jesus. I cast you to the pit of hell right now in Jesus name this is the kingdom of God and we are your servants who have submitted unto you and in fact Lord God we plead your blood over this entire sanctuary cover your children right now in the name of Jesus Lord God cover your saints in the name of Jesus Lord God let us be reminded that we sit in the heavenly realms with you Lord God and that we war even in the spirit Lord God so that the crisis will not consume us but the crisis will make us better in the name of Jesus Hallelujah, we come to you now. Now, God, I pray as I pray many times before, I'm not able and competent and sufficient of the task that stands before me. However, with the help of your Holy Ghost, allow your word to come forth with power and conviction. Truly, Lord, drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love that I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do in the powerful and precious and perfect name that is Jesus. I ask this in all prayers, and the people of God did say, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can, hallelujah, delivered in the lion's den, confidence in crisis, delivered in the lion's den, confidence, hallelujah, in Christ, as I pray that you will stay with me as the word of God continues to go forth, hallelujah. 
when you have small children, you understand that the television becomes a commodity. And in fact, the truth is that the children now dictate the programming that's in the household. You see, when I was coming up, cartoons mainly showed on Saturday mornings. You did have a few that would show either on the USA Network or maybe on Nickelodeon for after school, but the majority of cartoons were reserved on the major networks for Saturday morning. Oh my, how times have changed. There seems to be a channel for every child at every stage in cable or direct TV or however you receive your television programming. Channels like Sprout and Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. Uh, channels like the Cartoon Network, but what reigns supreme in the Heatley household is Disney Jr. Every program in Disney Jr. our children love, whether it's Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, whether it's the new version Mickey and the Roadster Racers, whether it's the PJ Mask, whether it's Sophia the Princess, whether it's Doc Stuffins, uh, it's always on Disney Jr., in fact, it's so wonderful now, you can just speak the cartoon or whatever network you want to see into the remote control, and it'll come up for you, which means it's on demand. So you don't have to wait until the program. And see, when I came up, you had to wait till the specific time to see what you wanted to see. You could not record it unless you had a VCR to put it in to record. But now, on demand, you can see anything you want to see at any time. And in the Heatley household, there is one that our children like, but I must admit, it's one of my favorites, too. It's called The Lion Guard. The Lion Guard is the next chapter in Disney's The Lion King. The Lion Guard is a little cub by the name of Kion. Kion is the son of Simba, who we knew in The Lion King was the cub, but now Simba is king of the jungle. And Simba has a son by the name of Kion, and he and his four friends patrol the entire Pride Lands to ensure the circle of life. He's joined by a female cheetah named Fooley. He has a, a best friend by the name of Bestie, who is a hippopotamus. Ono is the one who looks the bird that looks and can see from far distances to see where the danger is. And the loudest one of them is Bunga, who is the honey badger. These five control and patrol the pride lands to ensure that no evil comes in from the outlands. Kion's secret weapon is his roar. He tells everybody to stand back when it's time for him to roar. And when he roars, he gets on the mountaintop and his ancestors in the clouds of the spirit of his ancestors roar with him. And the roar is so fierce that it pushes everything that is in the way out of the way. Nothing can contend with the roar of this lion. It's called the Lion Guard. It's also a cartoon. And it's also Disney. Kion, Simba, and Mufasa are not the lions that are in our text. The lions that are in our text are a tool that's used for capital punishment in Babylon, now under control of the Medes and the Persians. The lions were in a pit whereas if anyone was an unlawful citizen and they broke the law, they were thrown to the lion's den. And so is the case that we have the prophet by the name of Daniel, he finds himself in the lion's den. He's only in the lion's den because he refused to pray to a God who was a man by the name of Darius, but he only chose to pray at the third, sixth, and ninth hour to his God, who is the most high God. And because of his no compromise clause to his God, he now finds himself in the lion's den. Will you come with me to Daniel, the sixth chapter? Here it is. Daniel is in a conspiracy. It seems like the satraps and the governors and the administrators are against him because King Darius, the newly king that took over from Belshazzar, the one from the Perds and the Medians who now have power in this province, they see that there is an excellent spirit in Daniel, and he is one who exceeds the expectations of all his other colleagues. And because of that, he will be exalted to the position of prime minister in Babylon. Because there's a plot against his life now, they come against him concerning the law of his God. And because of that, because he chose to pray instead of following the law, he now goes into the lion's den. But the Lord is with him. 
Bible says right here in verse 16 that they get him, tell him, cast him into the lion's den. As, as they're putting him into the lion's den, they lower him down. And the last words that he hears from the king, he says that the Lord, your God, whom you serve, will deliver you. You must understand the physical construct of the lion's den. The lion's den was a deep pit that had two entrances. There was a side entrance by which the lions would enter, but the main entrance by which the lions were fed was an opening and there was a dividing wall or a partition in the lion's den. What they would do is put food on one side, lift up the wall so that the lions would transfer, transpose from one side to the next side, and then as they would eat the meat of the flesh, the workers would go in and clean the carcasses and the remaining other side. Now, they were not fed on a daily basis. Because they were tools of capital punishment, they were fed sporadically, which means that when they knew that there was an opening, it was time to eat. So all of these ferocious lions at the time of which they opened the pit knew that it was time to eat, and Daniel was the one that would be eaten. But the Lord was with him. So they put him and lowered him down into this pit and get this to ensure that he could not escape. They actually put the pit, put a rock over the opening of the pit, not like they would used to do, and they sealed it. They took flax and mud and put it over the endings of the rock according to the chain. They put their signet rings in here to say that this is a royal decree, and when the hot sun would bake now, the only way that the tomb could be opened, or rather the pit could be opened, is if the seal was broken. Here it is, Dad Daniel is in the lion's den with no way to escape because he was lowered in the lion's den. But the Lord was with him. He goes into the lion's den and interestingly they hear nothing. The king is so in a lamenting voice and so sorrowful. He goes back to his throne. He goes back to the heaven, not the heavenly courts, but the royal courts and he hears nothing. He doesn't want any dancers. He does not want any music. In fact, he fasts and prays and stays up all night. But as soon as the crack of dawn, he goes to the lion's den and he asks the question, Daniel, is the God that you serve, whom you serve continually, servant of the living God, has your God been able to deliver you from the lions? Darius asked the wrong question. Because when he asked this question, he asked, has God been able to deliver you from the lion's den, which means there's a question to the potency, the power, and the capacity of the God that Daniel serves. As if the God that Daniel served is impotent, he should have just asked, Daniel, are you okay? But he says, Daniel, has your God been able to deliver you? Which suggests that Darius didn't really know the God of Daniel, because if he did, he would never question the ability of Daniel's God. He may have questioned the willingness of Daniel's God, but he should not have questioned the ability of Daniel's God because when it comes to the ability of Daniel's God, our God is omnipotent, which means he has all power. His name is El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. He's the all-sufficient one. He's the all-encompassing one, which means he has power and the one thing that he can do is deliver. In fact, he specializes in deliver who can deliver like our God? What other God you know can take 600,000 people that have been in captivity for 400 years and allow them to walk out of Egypt with more gold and silver and bronze than they had in the first place and walk with them for 40 years before they get to their promised land? What other God that you know can make sure he can come down from his heavenly throne and walk around a fiery furnace in a pit with three other boys? and make sure that nothing happens to them because this is our God who specializes in deliverance. What of the God that you know can make sure that he can go past all the guards, unlock prison chains without a key, without a combination, but simply because he speaks a word and then have the very same messenger and the angel lift his servant Peter to walk away from 16 guards without them knowing he can open iron gates of the city without a remote control or men to open it up 
one other God that you know that can come in the midnight hour and send an earthquake to shake the foundation of a Philippian jail when Paul and Silas were singing praises unto God and the chains fell off. What other God that you know that can incarnate himself to walk in the human experience to defeat death, hell, and the grave and deliver himself because my Bible says on Sunday morning that there was an empty tomb. This is the God we serve. I see that's not hitting y'all yet. Let me come a little bit closer to you. What other God that you know could deliver you? You ain't always been as cute as you are. You ain't always been in church. In fact, since you've been in church, you've been in some stuff. But the God that you serve came down and snatched you out of some stuff. Is there anybody here that's ever experienced the delivering power of God? Is there anybody here ever had God to come see about him? Has God been God in your crisis to keep you in the crisis, to bring you out of the crisis? Has God had to step in in some sticky situations and remove you from some things that you got yourself into? The God that we serve specializes in deliverance. Is there anybody here who knows that God is a deliverer? He's, he's, a, he's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. Darius asked the question, Daniel, servant of the living God, has the God whom you serve been able to deliver you? Here it is. Daniel answers him, O king, live forever. The fact that he heard Daniel's voice should have been enough to know that he was okay. But then Daniel gave an explanation. My God, hallelujah, sent his angel. And he shut the lion's mouths. So they have not hurt me. He understands now that Daniel has been delivered in the lion's den. Okay, you missed that. See, normally when you think about deliverance, you think about a movement from a physical location to where you are in the crisis to coming out of the crisis. But our God is so much God and has so much power. He does not have to remove the crisis from you, but he can deliver you in the midst of the crisis to make sure that you'll be kept, which means the circumstances does not dictate what happens to you, but it's the power of our God who can keep you in the midst of the crisis. See, we try our best to avoid crisis. We don't like being in the crisis. But can I help you to understand that since I've said yes to Jesus, I've had more crises walking with the Lord than I did when I wasn't serious about him. In fact, when I said yes to him, I found out that God will send you to some places where there is apparent danger. But he's so much God that no matter what the danger is around you, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the Lord my God is with me. Is there anybody here that has caught more hell walking with the Lord? You thought it was going to be all rosy, but when you finally got in God, that's when the crisis began to increase. I'm going to be helping you to understand children when you walk with God you will see some crises Jesus said himself as a matter of fact when he was baptized the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted Job was only doing anything but worshiping his God and because of the worship of his God he lost everything except his wife simply because he believed God sometimes your name will come up in the throne room of God and God will say have you considered my servant Jesus said to himself in this life you will have tribulation Paul said anybody that desires to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But I also love what Jesus said about those who persecute you because of him. He said, blessed are you when people persecute you. Say all kind of vile things about you. 
because of me. Here it is. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward in heaven. But I found out that sometimes I don't have to wait for my reward in heaven, that God will bring heaven to earth and bless me anyhow because I had the courage and the mitigated goal just to say yes and trust him. Is there anybody here on this Sunday morning that's ever said a yes to God and realized that God will bring heaven to you simply because you had the courage and the power to say yes. Delivered in lines, then Daniel has confidence in his crisis. You know how I know Daniel has confidence in the crisis? Look at the text. He only opens his mouth until the morning after. You're not with me? The story began at the beginning of the chapter. When he heard the decree and there was a plot against him, he went and prayed and talked only to God. When the king's officials came to get him and put him in the lion's den, he said nothing. When the king tried to give him a vote of confidence, he said nothing. When they put him in the lion's den, he said nothing. When they opened the door, he said nothing until Darius called out to him. That's confidence in God. Shiloh, I'm just trying to help you to understand. Everybody does not need to know your crisis. And you should not be talking to everybody. If you're going to talk to anybody, just go ahead and open your mouth and talk to God about your crisis. Because there's sometimes God needs you to be quiet and put all your trust in him and speak to him so that you can get the instruction that you need. You don't have to tell everybody, even if they're your brother and sister in Christ. Everybody don't need to know all your stuff. Just tell God and watch God tell us like he told Jehoshaphat and Judas stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes you just got to be still and know that he is the Lord and that he will be exalted in all the earth. You don't have to tell everybody. Just make sure that you speak to God. But can I help you understand how it is you should go into the crisis? First thing you need to do to have confidence in crisis to know that you'll be delivered Simply, you just need to know who you are. It's not that deep. Just know who you are. Here it is. Darius calls Daniel's name, but then he gives him the identity that he's seen in Daniel. Daniel, servant of the living God. Darius would not be able to give that designation to Daniel had Darius not seen some things. In Daniel, that allows him to know that this man is a servant of the living God. And because Daniel knows who he is, he doesn't even have to say anything. He just lives who he is because he knows his identity. See, you must understand this, that any time you go in a crisis or whether you're out of the crisis, your identity should not change. You should be who you are because of who God called you to be which means your physical location does not determine your identity. But who God says you are determines your identity. See, because whether you're in the crisis or not, you're still a child of the living God. Whether you're in crisis mode or in crisis situation, you're still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Whether or not you're in a crisis or you're in a peaceful situation, you're still more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and God is still for you and with you. You have to know who you are because here is the thing about your identity in the crisis. The crisis will not determine your identity, but the crisis will confirm your identity. You will find out who you really are when the crisis comes. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? You say you're a child of God and you say you're a Christian. You say you believe. You say you trust. You say you love him. Well, let the winds of your life begin to heat up and blow a little harder. Let the devil get a match and light a fire under you. We'll find out who you really are. Let 
things begin to come to you that you didn't expect. Let them have a board meeting about you and then tell you about the meeting after they had the meeting about you and you walk in the room and everybody's already seated. Then you find out who you really are. Let you receive a letter from the IRS saying they're garnishing your wages. Let you go to your job and your access card has now been denied and you got to go to security to take you to human resources because there have been some decisions about you unbeknownst to you. Let the things in your life begin to heat up. Let you come to your house and find that your home is surrounded by the authorities. Let you get a phone call at night that something has happened to your child. When you find yourself in a crisis, the crisis will expose who you really are. But you have to know that you are a child of God, especially if God is the reason for your crisis. See, Daniel is in this not just because there's a conspiracy against him. He's in this because he chose to obey God. And because he chose to obey God, now he finds himself in a crisis. He knows who he is. That's why he doesn't say anything. And the truth is, his conspirators and his accusers know who he is too. That's why they had to devise a plan that would come against the law of his God. Because they knew that he would not forsake his God. So they tried to comprise something that was going to force him to make a decision. Either he's going to go with God or he's going to go with the conspiracy. Which leads us to our second point. Not only must you know who you are, you have to know where you are. You're probably saying to yourself, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's obvious that Daniel is in the lion's den. That's where he is. Well, that may be where he is physically, but that's not where he is. You see, see, your physical location does not really determine where you are. Let, let me say that again. Your physical location does not determine where you are. Let me give you an example. My name is Tab Quincy Heatley. If I'm in the church, I'm Tab Quincy Heatley. If I'm at the grocery store, I'm Tab Quincy Heatley. If I'm other places, I'm Tab Quincy Heatley. That's my identity. But wherever I go doesn't mean that I'm at that place at the same time because my physical location can change. But my spiritual location has to remain consistent and constant. So whether Daniel is on his roof whether Daniel is in the lion's den, whether Daniel is in the royal court, whether Daniel is in the outlands, his spiritual location has not changed because Daniel, brothers, is in the will of God. You've got to always stay in the will of God, and the will of God will determine your circumstances. The circumstances don't determine whether you're in the will of God. It's the will of God that determines your circumstances. And get this, the will of God will determine your outcome in the circumstance. See, Daniel chose to obey God and continue to pray and because he chose to obey God and continue to pray that's a sign and signal that he is in the will of God and because he's in the will of God although it may take him to the lion's den we also see that God is with him in the lion's den because he's in the will of God see obedience will put you in the will of God see Daniel exemplifies what I call the no compromise clause in God. See, you can't compromise with God and the crowd. The crowd, the 120, chose to conspire against him. And it would have been easy for him not to pray to go along with the crowd. But Daniel understood something. God does not defend crowds. He defends faith and obedience. And the crowd, no matter who's in the crowd, has nothing to do with you. Because if you're going to stay in the will of God, you got to be in the will of God. And the only way you can stay in the will of God in his perfect will is through obedience. And when you walk in obedience unto God, doesn't matter your location. I can be in the lion's den. I can be in jail. I can be anywhere. But if my being there is because I'm following God, that means by the time I get there, God is already there. It's, it's, it's in the text, y'all. It's, 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 it's in the text. It's, it's in the text. God is already there. It's, it's in the text. He knows who he is 
He knows where he is. Now he knows who his help is. It's, 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 it's in the text. Uh, he says, as he answers the king in verse 22, he says, uh, my God. Let's stop right there. He says, my God, which suggests the God you serve didn't have anything to do with this. Uh, in fact, the God that you serve is not a God at all, but my God, which means he's giving God glory before he told him what happened. Y'all missed that. Um, a lot of times we wait for the punchline because we want to hear about the lines, mouths being shut and all that stuff. But the fact that he says, my God, yeah. is the sign and the symbol that he is already in a mold and a place of worship unto him. And he gave him glory because the truth is he did the same thing in the lion's did he was doing in the sanctuary. Y'all not hearing this. He did the same thing in the crisis as he did in the sanctuary. When he made his sanctuary on the rooftop, he was praying, giving God glory. And when he got into the lion's den, he was giving God glory. Why? Because the presence of the Lord is there. He said, my God sent an angel, and an angel is an angelic being that's in the presence of God, which means he was in fellowship with the Lord when he was praying, when they convicted him, but he was in fellowship in the crisis hallelujah he did the same thing in the den of lions that he would normally do in the sanctuary and I just wonder is there anybody here who's unashamed that no matter where you are that you are going to worship and give God glory it doesn't matter if you're in the boardroom it doesn't matter if you're in the courtroom you're going to give God glory because that's who you are and that's who he created can you make your crisis a sanctuary? Can you make a sanctuary in your crisis? Can you make a sanctuary in your situation? Can you make a sanctuary in your circumstance? Can you give God glory no matter where? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not even all. The presence of God is with him in the lion's den. Then he says, my God, sent his angel, and they shut the lion's mouths. The angel shut the lion's mouth. God is so powerful, he did not have to send an angel to do it. He just could have stopped it. But because Daniel was already a worshiper, he says, I'm going to let you know that I'm with you. My presence is going to go with you. That there is goodness with you everywhere you go because my presence is with you. And the angels shut the mouths of the lions. Do you get this? Lions were created to be ferocious. They were created to be carnivorous. They feed off of flesh and blood. They don't eat plants. They don't eat tree bark. They eat living and moving things that have blood in them. They hadn't eaten in a while. So when the cavity opens and they know something is coming down to them, they're thinking, eat. But because our God goes before us and because he is with us, he closed the mouths of the light. What are you saying? God did something by causing what he was created not do what it was created to do. Ooh, ooh I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all. By nature and instinct, what they do is feed our flesh. But because he is the Lord of all flesh, he can send a command and stop the very thing that he called them to do. Because his servant, he shut the mouth. What am I saying? He is the Lord of all flesh. And because he is the sovereign creator, whatever in creation must stand at attention when it hears his name call. So all those lions had to stop when the presence of God got in there and closed their mouths as if God sent his angel to say, you will not eat tonight, but you need to go home and get some rest because the one that they're sending down is my servant and he's innocent before me. He is the Lord of all flesh. 
He's God of the ant and the anteater. He's God of the butterfly and the beetle. He's God of the beast and the bear. He's God of the crocodile and the caterpillar. He is the Lord of all flesh. This same God can command the ravens to bring food to a prophet. This same God can make sure that a donkey can prophesy. This same God can make sure that the lions whose intent is to eat, to not eat because he is the creator of all and he is the Lord of all flesh. This same God can cause bodies of water that's supposed to flow into the ocean be at a standstill and move back so his children can get through. This same God can stop the earth from rotating around the sun because in Joshua 10, when he fought the Amorites, it said the sun still shined as long until they defeated the Amorites, which means he told the earth, you got to hold on, keep your position right here around the sun until my children finish doing what I call them to do. He's the same God that can tell gravity, you got to hold on for a second because my son is walking on the water and then he'll command somebody else to come to him. He'll tell creation to stop doing what it was created to do because he's the Lord of all flesh. Can I push it further? He said he shut the mouths. I didn't tell you this in the first service, but in my scholarly mind, the Aramaic word doesn't just mean to close the mouth. It means to stop the speech. Uh, if the lion got a closed mouth, the lion can't roar. Lions roar can be heard upwards of five miles because it's so ferocious and so powerful. So now, not only can it not eat, it can't speak. But as I subvert the text, the only the lions are not just in the lion's den. The lions were the one who conspired against him. Follow my logic. They accused him of doing something. And the accuser of the brethren is Satan. And Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour. So the lions are working with the accuser who is a lion. But my God has a tendency and a proclivity to shut the mouths of lions, which means he's shutting their speech, which means those who have accused you, those who have said ugly things about you, those who have attacked your character, those who have assailed your name, those who have vilified your very presence, they need to be careful when they put your name in their mouth because our God has the power to close the mouth and to stop the bark. He can silence some people. And in fact, in our text, he silenced them. So go ahead and tell your enemies, go ahead, keep talking about me. Keep saying all kind of vicious things about me. Go ahead, keep saying I'm not this. Talk about my anointing. Say I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You better be careful because my God has the proclivity to shut the mouths of lions. Because the truth is, he is the true lion king. Mm, mm, mm. Let, let, Let me help you understand something. Uh, I don't know if Disney was trying to be prophetic, but Disney talked about the Lion King, and they got the Lion Guard. But as I read my Bible, I realize that there really is only one Lion King, because he's king of the lions, and he's a lion himself, which means the lion that is the devil is subject to him. Because when you're king, everything is subject to him. And as I read my Bible and I flip over to the book of Revelation, and I get into the fifth chapter and the fifth verse, and they ask the question, who can break open the seals of judgment? And the multitude said, there is one who's a lion in the tribe of Judah, and he is able to break forth the seals. He's a lion in the tribe of Judah. He's a lion in the tribe of praise. That means when he opens his mouth, he commands praise. Because <laughs> he's a lion in the tribe of Judah. Not only is he a lion in the tribe of Judah. I keep on reading about who he is. And I see that when I get to the 19th chapter, after everything is over, they said there is one who has on a robe that's been dipped in blood. And here it is. The armies of heaven follow him. The armies of heaven follow him. 
and it's said that it's a double-edged sword that comes out of his mouth that serves as his tongue. This is why you got to be careful what you say about God's children because he is the word of God. And the Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And then it says, every tongue that rises in judgment against me, he shall condemn. That's why I get happy because he condemns every word against him and his children because he is the word that it says written on his thigh is the title king of kings and lord of lords his name is not Mufasa his name is not Simba and his name is not Kion but he is the lion king and he's a lion in the tribe of Judah and he's king of kings and lord of lords and his name is wonderful and the armies of heaven follow him which means if I belong to him I got some divine protection touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm you better tell your enemies if they want to keep their life and their enemy, they better keep your name out of their mouth because my God will defend me when I walk in his will and choose to do what he says. Is there anybody here that knows there's a name that is above every name and that name is the Lion King? He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords and Kings of the Lion which means he's King over the devil and the devil got to submit to him. His name is Jesus. And my confidence in the crisis is him because he's the Lion King. He's not a cartoon. Don't have to come up with a script. Don't have to draw any characters. This was done before the foundations of the world of who he is. That is the one who defends me. And that's the one who will defend you. If you would just say yes unto him. Did this in the first service. If you're unashamed, and you know you're in a crisis. You know you're in a crisis. This is not a time to be cute. You need God to be God in your crisis. I just want you to come to the altar. If, if you are in a crisis and you need help, you don't have to explain. You don't owe any explanation to nobody. But you need God to show himself to be God in the crises. Come on, come close to the altar. Come close to the altar. Come on. We just want to pray with you today. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the response of the call of the man or woman of God. Because it's a response of faith. It's a move of faith. Not in me, not in the preacher, not in the pastor, but it's a move because you hear that there's a call and a summoning. And you say, we're going to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, since this is a crisis between you and God, unlock your hands. Lift your hands. Because we're still in worship. I've come to understand the power of worship. I've come to understand the power of crying out to God and asking God, to come be God in my situation. I also want to say this. It's not that he's not God. It's just that he hasn't revealed how he's going to do it yet. But until then, lift your hands and worship him. Because this is what he called us to do to begin with. And that is to worship him. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus. These your children have come before you now. With hands lifted up, Lord God. They have a heart of thanksgiving. Their desire is to bless you. And so, God, with the apostolic authority, I ask that you would bless them. God, I call the winds from the north, east, south, and west to blow into their homes. I pray that you would blow blessings, Lord God, and allow them to understand that they are delivered and that you have power to deliver them in the process, Lord God. Help them not to keep their focus on the circumstance or the crisis, but help them to align their spiritual eyes to see you in everything, that you have the power to gird them up and to be a hedge of protection even when they're in the midst of the crisis. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. And God, we rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. 
We release the sword of the Lord against the enemy right now in Jesus' name. God, wherever there is the crisis, I ask that you rain your hot hailstones of fire to burn up everything that's trying to keep them bound right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would speak that the shackles will fall off, help them to understand that they are free in Christ Jesus. They're not bound to a job. They're not bound to a supervisor. They're not bound to anything, but they are free in the name of of Jesus and that they will live in that freedom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Now help them to understand that the name of Jesus is a strong tower and that they can run into it and be safe. But Lord God, even as they stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, give them the courage to stand up in the midst. Hallelujah. And remind them that the battle is yours. That is not theirs, the battle Amen. truly is, Lord. I plead your blood over them right now. Yes, God. Every place that they tread, Lord God, let them be dripping with footsteps in your blood to give a sign to the enemy to know that he better think twice before he tries to come again because this child is protected yes, yes. by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, your children are worshiping you. And they see you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 I hear the God doing something. I hear God saying something. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So all of you that are here in the altar, even all of you that are out there, I want you to hear the word of the Lord. And I want to give an explanation to it because I don't want you to think this is a game or a gimmick. The Lord is even saying to me right now that for those of us who are here, and who's asking that they do something. He wants your faith to meet him. To believe that he can do it. And here's how he's asking to do it. He's saying that our faith a lot of times is attached to our giving. In the sense that what we cherish the most and hold on to is the thing that he wants. Not that he needs it, but he wants you to be free to release it. So we're going to do this very quickly. We don't need any ushers. This is between you and God. Seal this prayer with an offering unto him. I promise you this is not Pastor Tal Quincy Healy because I don't even like doing this. Trust me. But God is saying, and I have to be obedient. He's saying, just give me an offering. Just give me an offering. I'm not saying that the offering is going to make it happen. I'm not suggesting it's going to change because you gave the offering. But what God is saying, just give an offering unto me as your worship. Hallelujah. You can come bring it right here into these two receptacles or you can just text the shallow BC to 77977. Let me give this, 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 this. Let me give this, uh, disclaimer I told you sometimes God will have you do things that you're not comfortable with because it goes against the grain it goes against what you know to be conventional but what I found out with God is he has to make you uncomfortable so that you can trust him hallelujah so in any way in any form or fashion those of you at the altar if you got to go back to your seat just come give an offering unto him and just bring it down here hallelujah just real simple. Just real simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're in the choir as well, just come do it real quickly. Hallelujah. My phone is dead. I keep telling y'all I never asked y'all to do anything I'm not willing to do, so let me go ahead and get mine. Hallelujah. Giving via text, via push pay.
strong one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God for your obedience. Hallelujah. This gave my offering. Hallelujah. Don't know how he's going to do it. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. 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 Church, we have to know that God is God of everything. Do not be confused or consumed to think that the crisis means you've done something wrong. That's not how God works all the time. Yes, sometimes there is correction and punishment because of decisions. But a lot of times God puts you in things because he wants you to see him and to remove yourself out of it, which means that the only way you can get through this or even come out is because of God and not because of your own volition. As we stand all over the room, I want everybody to pray. Go ahead, stand up and pray. Stay where you are, just pray. Because God is calling. Church, pray for those who are trying to make a decision whether they're going to join this church or they're going to come to Christ Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. Just begin praying. Just begin praying in the atmosphere. Asking God to save someone. Now, if you know that's you, and you know that you stand in need of salvation, and you know that God has been calling you to this ministry, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your right hand and raise it high. We will make somebody, somebody come get them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Deacons, deacons, go back. Be praying, praying, praying. We want you praying. We want you praying. Calling on the Lord, calling on the Lord, praying. If you have no church home and you know that God is calling you today, raise your right hand high. We want to see someone to come get you. We just want to make sure. We just want to make sure. Pray, church. Come on, pray, church. Don't look around. Pray. Talk to God. This is a critical time for people. Come on, talk to God. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Listen up for atmosphere of worship. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. We don't want to just move past this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If that's you and you're contemplating, just raise your hand. We'll come get you. We'll come get you. Just raise your hand. We'll come get you. Hallelujah. 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 God of heaven, I come to you now for that person who we know is here and they're still wrestling in their hearts. God, I pray that you would release peace upon them even now to know that they are in the right place because they are in your will. I ask, Lord God, that you would speak to their spirits and that you would allow them, Lord God, or that they would allow you to be Lord of their lives and they give themselves over to you right now. We pray, Lord God, that they would come forward not just to become a part of this ministry, Lord God, but to signify that they are with you because you love them and ultimately they love you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. God, I love you. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be my God. I want you to be my Savior. I confess my sins before you and I promise to live before you. Welcome me in, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, for the first time, and you've never, ever prayed that prayer before, that is the prayer of salvation. So here's what we're going to do. If you prayed that prayer and believe it in your heart, you're saved. So I'm not even going to ask that you come forward. I will ask this. At some point, because you know you're saved, and you know that's your earnest heart's desire, you will come forward and give us your hand. Amen? We are in the salvation business, not the church membership business. Amen? Hear me when I say that. We're in the salvation business. Because of salvation, the next step is to become a member of the church. All right? But we want to make sure you save first. 
Now, you need to come to the church to know how to live saved, amen, to help you. But if you pray that prayer, you're saved. I would just ask that you would come forth either after the service, come to our church office. You can meet our ministers at the doors. You can come meet our diaconate ministry. All the deacons and deaconesses, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep them up real high. So raise your hand. See, these are the people that are with you. You can see either one of them. Ministers, raise your hand real high. You can see them. Matter of fact, Shiloh Baptist Church, raise your hands. You can see any one of these people right here, and they will get you to the right place. Amen? Now may the God of all creation walk with you and bless you as you continue to seek his face and to live in his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you on Tuesday. Thank you.